I'm trying to find the bad song in this album. Where are where where is it? Where where? I don't know. Where? I, I can't find any. Can anybody help me? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cher. I'm a poet and I love to analyze song lyrics. Today I'm so excited to bring you another Fiona Apple video. So let me just tell you guys, I listen to Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It's not only my favorite album of 2020 when it came out, it's my favorite album of all time. I listen to it all the time. So I know what you're thinking. Why did you not listen to the rest of Fiona Apple's work? Okay, do you, you know how you find something that you really, really like and you don't really want to touch it? You don't really want to mess with it? So that's what happened with me. I just kept replaying. Every time I wanted to listen to Fiona Apple, I just kept replaying her album, Fetch the Boat Cutters, because it's my favorite album. I absolutely love that album so, so much. And so I'm a little nervous, but we're going to dive in. I really, really, really want to finish her discography. So we are going to listen to Fiona Apple's The Idler Will is Wiser Than the Driver of the Screw and Whipping Cords Will Serve You More Than Ropes Will Ever Do. We're going to be calling it the idler will for short. That is for sure. Um, I'm going to be honest. I started listening to this and I went and I checked back the audio and it was really bad. And I think I only listened to like the first song. So, so far I was having a meltdown. I absolutely loved it. So we're just going to redo it. We're just going to redo the first song and a half. And then we're just going to go dive into all the new songs. So I'm just, I'm ready to go. I hope these earrings don't bother you because I really want to wear earrings today. Maybe I'll take them off later. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead with every single night. Got the head, got the speaker on. This album came out in 2012 and we are going to pull up the lyrics on Genius. Let's go ahead and listen to every single night. Every single night, I endure the flight. Of little wings of white flame, butterflies in my brain. It's just so fun! Percolate the mind, trickle down the spine, swarm the belly, swell into a blaze. That's where the pain comes in, like a second skeleton. In the nights of light with my brain. Love this. It's like the song begins middle is has a middle and, and every couple of minutes and it's just like it takes you on such a journey and what i was saying is this song is giving me like this is her anxiety right like this is like what she is going through on a regular basis she's at night she has all these thoughts flowing in her head she's talking about every single night i endure the fight she's talking about like anxiety her thoughts, her thought patterns, the, the emotional complexities that she digests and dissects at night. And I love this like uh, imagery that we get of these, the little wings of white flame butterflies in my brain. I love that. I absolutely love that. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, trickle down the spine, swarm the belly, swelling to the breeze. Just beautiful, beautiful metaphors and imagery to describe anxiety, constant thoughts. The, the constant things that swirl in your mind and you're having to navigate them. And, and, and at night, they always come out at night, right? I love it. I love it. She's doing such a good job in this song. And I just love how it has these different layers and beats and patterns. It's just so good. So good. Okay. I'm gonna try to be still now. Gonna win no some good while. And if we had a double king that there, we could move it. 
the times that I does And maybe I'd relax and let my breast just bust open My heart's made of I love that Rolls <laughs> around me and that's why the devil just can't get around me Every single night's alright Every single night's a fight She's so good. She's so good. Her vocals. Am I gonna like this album as much as Vegetable Cutters? Is this what you guys are trying to tell me? Is this what you guys are trying to tell me? Like I can't, I can't handle it. It's too much. Like you have. This is why I didn't want to listen to this because it's just like I was like, if it's just as good as Vegetable Cutters, I can't handle it. It's it's just so good. The part where she goes. And maybe I'd relax, let my breast just bust open. My heart made of parts that all of all that surround me. And that's why the devil just can't get around me. That's that part of like, maybe one day I'll let my bust, my breast just butt, bust open. I love this one. I love this line. This is like, okay. As somebody that has quite the region of breast <laughs> am i keeping this in the video that imagery of just like letting it all out you know letting it letting it letting it go free that sensation of like maybe one day i'll relax maybe one day i won't be in so much of my head you know that that part i just relate to so much because it's like in the beginning we have that contrast of all of these thoughts and things keeping her up at night mm -hmm. I just love this because it really does just capture the journey of being a creative person, a, the journey of being someone that feels all your emotions, but typically creative people, artists are. And she's really capturing kind of like the negative aspect of that is, which is like, you're always in your mind. You have all of these thoughts. You want to feel everything. You want to experience everything that there is about the world. That's what I'm getting from this song. That's my interpretation. But at the same time, there's like this feeling of overwhelm that comes with that. There's a feeling of overwhelm that comes from being a sensitive artist. And I think somebody like Fiona, we know more than anything that she is the type of person that's going to be in her head. I mean, her songs are so wordy. Her songs have such a complexity to them, such a vast vocabulary that just imagine what she cuts out, right? Like just imagine how long these songs are before she edits them. So this song to me is so perfect because it just embodies who Fiona is as an artist. And I think anybody that struggles with being in their head all the time can really, really relate to the song. I absolutely, I love it. I absolutely love it. So next we're going to listen to Daredevil. I think I had listened to some of this um, but then I had stopped to check the audio. So let's go ahead and listen to it again. Spoiler, I also like this song too. So we're going to re-listen to it. I, I didn't listen to the whole thing. I guess I just must be a daredevil. She's so poetic. She's so poetic. anything until I smash it up. I'm calm, I'm cold, I'm calm, I'm hot. Not so with the warm a lot. I'm all alone. A confidant to help me laugh it on And don't let me ruin me I may need a chaperone The instrumentation! Okay. I can't. It's just too much. Make the slots and the flaps upon my way And I use them to give me lip Hip, hip for the lip Hip, hip for the drag I want them all in my bag Oh, give me anything And I'll turn it into a gift I love this. This is also talking about her artistic But a little bit deeper. This is also talking about her artistic process But kind of just like explaining her Her 
what is it her system how how she takes everything and and she turns it into a gift that's her art that's 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 her creative process she says say i'm an airplane and the gashes i got from my heartbreak make the slots and the flaps upon my wing that's a metaphor that she's saying like like i take my pain and i create something from it you know, I create something from my pain. That's what I'm getting from it. My heartbreak is like the airplane's wings. You know, it's like the, the slots and the flaps upon my wing. I Because I take that pain and I turn it into something. And sometimes that's an overwhelming process. You know, that's what she's trying to say in the song. And then she goes, oh, I didn't even get to the part. And then she goes, and I use them to give me a lift. If you're a writer or any kind of artist, you know what she's talking about here. You take all of your crap, you turn it into something, and then it lifts you up by getting it off your chest by through this creative process. It's just like... Okay, so I would be remiss to not include this in the video, but I went and looked more into this lyric and she's actually making a commentary on the mechanics of an airplane and how the wings of an airplane has little slots and those slots... Um, help the airplane fly into the air and so she's saying like the heartbreak are the gashes in the same way that a wing has to have flaps in order to fly the plane which is absolutely insane and you can look into that more but that is incredible but also the instrumentation how it's it, it kind of sounds like things are coming together that's what i'm getting from the song Don't let me And I love that line, but don't let me ruin me. I may need a chaperone. Yes, this is my process. Yes, this is what I do, but it also can be my demise. You know, any artist is talking about the pain of that, right? The pain of constantly going on this journey of always being in your head, of always seeing things like, don't let me ruin myself. You know, I, I might need a little bit of guidance with this situation here. That's what I'm getting from the song. So relatable. Me Ugh, the growl. Look at, look at, look at me. I'm all the fishes in the sea. Wake me up. Give me, give me, give me what you got in your mind in the middle of the night. She might be the best artist of our time. One of them. Like. You let me look out for you. Protect what I'm finding. And never let it stop. And then that way, you let me stay. Skirt in the skirt like I want to. And I will try hard to hold on to you with open arms. But don't let me. The marching. She's kind of talking. I feel like she's talking to her lover here. She's talking to a, a, a love interest or a future, or she's she's almost like giving a map to herself in this song. She's like, "This is who I am. I'm." I'm all the fishes in the sea. I'm a complex person. I'm a bit of everything. But she's saying, um, but but I can be there for you too. She says, wake me up. Give me, give me, give me what you got in your mind in the middle of the night. Maybe you let me look out for you. Like I can look out for you, protect what I found in you and never let it starve. Like I can bring out something out of you and I can also be there for you and you can benefit from who I am as a person as an artist and and I cannot let that internal self that you hold starve but at the same time she's also saying but you need to be able to watch me right because I'm a bit of I don't know how to control all of this energy I don't know what to do with all this creative energy all of this like complexity that I hold this creative complexity so I need somebody to be there as like my stability you know so I'm I'm gonna give you a lot 
but you're there to, to provide me some stability. You're there to provide me some reassurance. That's what I'm getting from the song. And then she says, then that way you let me stay skirting the skirt like I want to. When she says skirting the skirt like I want to, I'm getting like, you allow me to be free. I need you, but I also need you to just like, let me be this person. Let me be this free person. That's what I'm getting from it. Okay. So I had only heard some of that. That was so, so good. Man, I cannot wait to re-listen to this album. Two songs in, we're A+. Plus. We're A+. Plus. We'll see. We'll see. So we're going to go to the next song called Valentine. Ooh, we just had Valentine's Day a couple days ago. I did not have one, if case you were wondering. Um, I'm too weird to date, you know? Like I just stay, I just, I just sit in my room and scream at music. This is what I do. This is like the second Valentine's video I've had, uh, or Valentine's adjacent video that I've had where I'm just like screaming at music because I'm so excited. Um, so I need to find someone that likes to scream at music like me. Um, but, but we are gonna have a Valentine because we are going to be listening to Valentine by Fiona Apple. That was a slow song. You didn't see my Valentine. I sent it via pantomime. While you were watching someone else. I stared at you and cut myself mm, That's dark That's all I'll do cause I'm not free A fugitive too dull to flee I'm amorous but out of reach A still life drawing of a peak In the cup. I stand no chance of growing up. I've made my peace, I'm dead, I'm done. Beautiful. I watch you live to have my fun. I root for you, I love you, 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 you. into the song I didn't really have I, I didn't say too much but I think she has a crush on this person but she hasn't really I think she has a crush on this person but she hasn't really let them become aware because she says you didn't see my valentine I sent it via pantomime like she's giving signals but this person hasn't really noticed her attention um when while you were watching someone else, I stared at you and cut myself. Like this person is showing interest to other people and Fiona Apple is in pain by that. She feels she feels like, you know, in a state of wanting the self-harm by seeing this because she's so heartbroken. She loves this person. 
That's all I do because I'm not free, a fugitive too dull to free to flee. I'm amorous but out of reach, a still life drawing of a peach. Um, so there's definitely a feeling of being trapped in this song, and I'm curious why. She has this intense feeling, she has this intense desire, but it's out of reach for her. You know, she's not really pursuing these emotions for whatever reason. That's what I'm getting from it. But it just, it seems kind of like just a, just a, a normal, like kind of longing type of song. But the way that it's constructed is so beautiful. Her voice sounds gorgeous on this song. I love how we kind of have these transitions. Um, as far as the writing style, um, it looks like it goes A-A-B-B -B rhyme scheme. Um, so that means you're rhyming every, every two lines and then switching to a different, different uh, rhyme scheme. So let me just see if I explain that the right way. Yeah, it's an A-A-B-B -B rhyme scheme with the first two lines rhyme and then the second two lines rhyme. And that kind of carries on actually throughout the entire song is the other thing I noticed when I was when I was done listening to it. It's a little bit in the poetic devices area, but that is what she's doing in this song. So essentially that is what it is as a, as a form of poetry. There's a lot of there's a lot of metaphors. I am, I'm I'm a tulip I'm a tulip in a cup. That's that's a metaphor. She's a tulip in a cup. She has no chance of growing up. That is a great metaphor because she's talking about she's a tulip in a cup. There's not enough space for her to grow. That's what she's saying there. I've made my peace. I'm dead. I'm done. I watch you live to have my fun. There's an envy here. She's she's observing what this person is getting into and she's envious. And she's saying, "I'm small. I'm not grown." I'm not going to grow up. There's not enough space for me. There's a bit of, there's a bit of a, uh, she's stifled. She's a little bit stifled. I'm curious about that. I love, 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 love this. In verse two, where she says, I made it to a dinner date. My teardrops seasoned every plate. My teardrops seasoned the plate. That is that's that's gorgeous i mean i love that imagery and that um that use of like turning her tears into a metaphor in that way and even like the idea that teardrops have salt is really interesting i tried to dance but lost my nerve i cramped up in the learning curve i love that too yes there's a bit of a double a double meaning here you know her she's literally cramped up dancing but there's also that the learning curve, like she, she, she gave up on it. She didn't want to keep going. She didn't want to get over that learning curve, that initi that initiation. It feels very adolescent. Coming of age is what I'm getting from this song. Like maybe not having enough experience, maybe still having this innocence and kind of dipping your toe in the water, but seeing other people around you progress. That's what I get from this because it feels very youthful. It feels very like. I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and I'm a little bit behind. I feel a little bit behind as I'm going through this experience. Okay, we're gonna look, we're gonna move on to Jonathan. I don't know what Jonathan did. We're gonna find out because don't mess with Fiona Apple. That's all I'm going to say. Do not mess with her. So let's see. Let's see what Jonathan's about. Don't don't piss me off today. <laughs> Right with me. If she 
she's tired of the reason You wanna tell you why she's alright with me Just tolerate my little fist tugging on the forest I don't wanna talk about I don't wanna talk about anything like it I think I love this part where she says Jonathan anything and anyone you have done has got to be all right with me if she's part of the reason you are how you are she's all right with me that is so pure and honest like look your history if if it made you who you are I'm good with it I don't need to hear about it because it's like whatever you had before me made you who you are and I love exactly the way you are so I'm accepting of it all because those are the building blocks to make the person that I'm madly in love with or in love with right now that's so I don't know there's something so authentic about that and so uh introspective I love that you like the captain but I like watching you to live. This piano part right here. Come on, take you a start. Like the captain. She loves an outro, that's for sure. <laughs> Man, am I gonna hit any bad songs today? I don't think so. I'm, I'm trying to find the bad song in this album. Where are, where, where is it? Where, where? I don't know. Where? I, I can't find any. Can anybody help me? I love this lyric. You'd like to captain a capsized ship. Capsized, sunk. So he likes to take on the the challenge is what I'm getting from that line. Like you like to take on the challenge. I wonder if she's talking about herself in that. But I like watching you live. You'd like to captain a capsized ship, but I like watching you live. Maybe you were attracted to me because you thought you were going to have to take care of somebody that had all these issues, that had all of this all of, all of this drama, you know, but I really just want to watch you live your life. Like I'm, I'm almost in admiration of you is what I get from that. Um, what I will say about the writing that I noticed a lot, those C alliterations were sprinkled throughout the entire song. She's going, um, from the beginning, from the minute she said, Jonathan called me again, we got Coney Island, then we got Calculate, then we got Calibrate captain a capsize shit jonathan call again just all those c sounds she sprinkled that through the entire song so i feel like she wanted to start that off and kind of keep it going throughout the whole song to go with her message from the minute she started writing jonathan call me we got that that cuss sound throughout the entire song let's stop 
talking about any drama, any of our past. I'm just here because I want to appreciate you. That's what I get from the song. There's a bit of like, forget about that. Let, let it go. Let it go. That's what I get from the song. And then there's a bit of a sexuality, a little sensuality. And she's like, just tolerate my little fist tugging on your forest chest, you know? And that forest chest is talking about the hair on his chest. She's describing it as a forest chest. And I feel like if we think about the symbolism behind that, that is kind of hinting at the fact that this is a mature person. This is a person that has experience. They have a forest chest. You know, she's she's very uh, intentional in, in mentioning that, mentioning that, in my opinion, because this might be an older man. This might be someone that she's kind of looking up to. And I feel like that also goes back to what she was talking about with talking about this person's experience, this, this person's experience with women. So she's just looking at him. She's very, she's in that like very observing point of view. Like, I'm just watching you. We don't need to talk about things. We don't need to go into all the drama, but I'm looking. You know, I'm looking at you, I'm seeing, you know, I'm in admiration. You know, she she definitely sees this person as higher than her. That's what I get. There's, she's younger, younger in age or in spirit, but this person is above her in a, in a way. That's what I get. She, there's almost like a masculinity, you know, with that forced chest. There's a masculinity, there's, there's an authoritativeness on this man's side. Jonathan, he's, he's 6'5", no, um... Yeah, even just like the, the whole idea of watching, it's really sticking out to me because I feel like there's an adoration. There's an adoration. There's there's a there's an idol idolization, really. There's an idolization. Um Yeah. Take me to Coney Island, take me on the train. Even that whole idea of taking me, you know, she's being led in this situation. She's being led through this, you know? Yeah, I really like how that's captured in the song. And even just that whole piano throughout there and, and the variations, it really kind of took you through it. You could feel the rhythm of them, you know, traversing through the city, going to Coney Island, going on the train. So excellent, excellent. Are we going to hit a bad song today? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm, I'm just hype. I'm just hype. I love good music. Y'all know, if it's not good, my energy drops. My energy is just continuously going up. So we're in a good place. Let's keep going. Next, we're gonna listen to Left Alone. Okay. I love this. Give me a drum line. when she said how can I ask anyone to love me when all I do is beg to be alone why did she just read me right now why am I gonna start crying because that's me oh man so she's talking about like having this outer shell and being so hard and calloused and I'm about to be read on the song that's okay that's okay Oh, the instrument 
presentation is crazy. honestly too good like you have to put a limit to these things you can't just be that good in one song you know spread it out you know that was insane where do I even begin with that and so she talks about this overture and in the beginning we get kind of this long drawn out instrumentation so when she says you made your major overtures like your grand en entrance is that another way of saying like you made a grand entrance um when you were a sure and oratun much. She has a great vocabulary. I don't know what or oratun means. Oratund? Oratund. I love how I'm learning things as I'm as I'm as I'm listening. That's how you know that the person that you're listening to is not is very smart. Full round. Full and round. Pompous, pretentious. I wonder which definition. And I was still a dewy petal. So that kind of hints back to what we heard in the first, in the last song. It's like, there's this contrast between her being very inexperienced, perhaps younger, perhaps not very knowing of herself, lacking a little bit of confidence. And on the other hand, the, 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 the love interest, very pompous, very, uh, takes these grand overtures, very grand, very in your face. There's a confidence, there's a little bit of a, a narcissist all about themselves, you know, in that way. So I wonder if she says, you packed to twirl your skirt at the palace. She's saying he wasn't prepared for this. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't equipped for this. That's maybe that's what she means by that. Tell me in the comments, because I love that line but I'm not really understanding it fully. But I do know that when she says, I went to work to cultivate a callus, like she, after this entire situation, she had to develop a hard skin. She had to become calloused. Cause then she says, and now I'm hard, too hard to know. I don't cry when I'm sad anymore. Tears calcify in my tummy. Fear coincides with the toe. So tears calcify in my, in my tummy. I know, so she's saying the tears never come out. They calcify. Yeah, so essentially she's saying calcify, so harden. So these tears, they harden in her stomach. She She's not able to release them anymore because she's had, she's callous so much. She's become such a hard person. And so she's being very honest here about how this 
heartbreak has affected her as a person has made her a harder person a harder person to get through in herself and i think that's basically the full theme of the song i'm not gonna go lyric by lyric but my ills are reticulate is my woes are granular the ants weigh more than the elephants nothing nothing is manageable so could couldn't we skip the valedictorians her language is crazy I feel like the ants weigh more than the elephants. Like the small problems are even bigger to me than even the bigger problems. You know, they're having a bigger impact on me. Um, my woes are granular. The ants weigh more than the elephants. Nothing, nothing is manageable. So she's by saying like nothing is manageable, not the small things, not the big things. Everything is impacting me. Everything, everything is scary to her. You know, she, it's almost that sensation. Like even when something small happens, you're done because you're so, you're so callous from your past that even the small granular things hold just as much weight as the bigger things. And even the small granular things cause you to just be like, forget it. Forget it. I don't even want to go further because I know what pain could could potentially happen. And so now I I block it all off. I don't want anything to do with it. That's what I that's ultimately what I'm getting from this song. And I think that's something that as you get older, you relate to the song more and more. Like I know I'm gonna relate to the song even more. Um and I relate to it now um more than I would have had I listened to this in 2012. Cause it's just like when you go through so many different things, you just stop remaining open. You just aren't as open anymore. And that affects you. That affects you because it blocks your blessings. It blocks your ability to receive. It blocks your ability to receive love. It blocks your ability to receive friendship. It blocks your ability to have new big things in your life because you're always expecting the worst. You're always expecting the same pain that you've had before. So how can you expect love when all you do is beg to be left alone? How can you expect love when you don't leave your house? How can you expect the love when you're on the phone with somebody and you don't open up to them? You don't open up to your friends. You don't open up to your family because you're so calcified from your pain. And it can be a pain from when you were younger. That affects you for your entire life because you refuse to be open. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to everybody because everybody does it. And this song captures that that uh that situation that we put ourselves to as a form of protection all right we're back we charged our stereo let's go ahead and listen to rare wolf like and like and you to werewolf the way you left me for dead but i admit that i provided a full Um, 
I think she's talking about the end of this relationship and saying like we're incompatible. It's better when you're not around me. And but she's also kind of saying like it's okay if a relationship ends. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's 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 okay if a song ends in a minor key. It doesn't make it a bad song. It's not the it's not a happy ending, but it's an ending and it's okay because not every relationship is going to last. And that's kind of what I get from this song. It's like there's just a mid mismatch. When you're around me, things don't go well. She says, but you are such a super guy till the second you get a whiff of me. We're like a wishing well and a bolt of electricity. So she's kind of saying like, I brought out something in out of you that was not good. For some reason, when you started seeing me, things weren't compatible. Things weren't meshing right. Like, for example, in the beginning, she says, I could liken you to a werewolf the way you left me for dead. But I, but I admit that I provided a full moon. She's like, you left me for dead, but I'm not going to lie. I was the full moon to the werewolf. You know, the werewolf comes out on the full moon. Like, I triggered you. I brought this out of you. I'm not going to, I am going to take some responsibility for the inf. I'm going to bear some responsibility for the influence my personality and my presence um, had on you. Whether or not that's true or not, that's her perception. Her thinking that she had a negative influence on on not a negative but like triggering you know triggering um bringing out the worst in somebody they both bring out the worst in each other that's what i get from there it's like you did something bad to me but i'm not gonna lie i could see how i could bring out some bad stuff out of you and i love that she's doing this with the writing technique of having all these different metaphors scattered throughout one of the my favorite lines when she says the lava of a volcano shot up hot from under the sea one thing led leads to another and you made an island out of me because volcanoes and lava they create islands right that's the, that's the source of an island but she's also using that island thing of being like i'm alone on this island like you made an island out of me there's nobody nobody around me so you you left an island out of me means you left me alone you left me with no one so it's kind of a double double meaning and a double metaphor in a way i absolutely love that oh we're making our way through this today She's such a great piano player. Oh, the periphery. They throw good parties there. Those peripheral idiots. Always have a bike to bear. Change the key. Well, getting a lot of those puss sounds throughout the whole song this is a very common thing with fiona she starts with a word and then she keeps keeps repeating those those uh sounds those consonant sounds that puss sound throughout the whole song she kind of repeats a lot of the sounds throughout the song a lot of alliterations in here if you think it's worth it, with me
Fiona is and it, this is like the key to having music that is accessible to a degree because at a certain point it just becomes too much too heavy in language too heavy in poetic devices but what Fiona does a great job in and what the best songwriters do a great job in is having this ability to balance these complexities with just saying it as it is you know you just you have to have that moment where you just release it right like you just say what you mean you just say what's in your heart you know perfect example of this is lana del rey's fuck it i love you you know you go through all this poetry you go through all this and then at the end of the day it's like fuck it i love you this is that fuck it i love you moment where she's saying here all that loving must have been lacking something if i got bored trying to figure you out you let me down i don't even like you anymore there's nothing about that that you can't understand that is the meaning of the whole song she can say all this poetry she can make all these metaphors but at a certain point you gotta get to the point and that is what fiona apple is great at she'll she'll build it up she'll use this expansive vocabulary she'll use these metaphors she'll use these poetic devices she'll use these alliterations she'll use these syllabic verses and at the end of the day i just don't like you anymore flat flat that's the key let me down. I don't even like you anymore at all. This is good. Oh, the periphery. Okay, so all the periphery, like his periphery. So what distracted him from her, from what he, what, what distracted him from what was in front of him? That's what she's, that's what I think she's saying when she's saying, oh, well, the periphery stole you away from me. I love it. All the periphery, they throw good parties there. It's like, what, I, you're always going to be, the, the things that you're staring at on the side, you know, in your peripheral vision is always going to look tempting to you. It's always going to be appealing to you. And I love this part where she talks about he found a prettier girl than me with a, with a more even tempered ear. That's also something that we can relate to where it's like they found somebody simple. They found somebody that was even tempered, not causing a ruckus, not causing chaos, but also not interesting in a way, you know? Next we have, is it regret? So she's saying, before I met you, I wasn't familiar with regret, but you were, you knew, you knew regret, you knew the emotion of regret. And through our experience, you taught me regret too. Now I know what it means to regret. And I learned that through the heartbreak in our relationship. Um, and that's what I'm saying. And I don't know if she, she regrets even meeting this person to begin with, if that's what she means by the regret, or if she just regrets everything that happened um, in the relationship. Maybe she regrets her actions or his actions, but whatever it is, a lot of regrets stem from this relationship, which is an experience, an emotional experience that she had not had prior to this relationship dynamic. I like... Do I are you so
like this. This is saying like, I didn't know all these things. I didn't know all these emotions, all these darker emotions. I came in this with good intentions. I came in this without having experienced any of these things. And at first I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why you felt regret until you taught me what regret was. I didn't understand why you were so mean until you made me feel those things, you made me feel mean. I understand why you're mean because now I'm mean. I learned that through this dynamic we were in. So now I get it. All these questions I was asking when I was innocent, when I didn't know, you taught me in the most negative way. I mean, what she's saying, she's really reading this guy to Phil because she's saying, you brought out the worst in me. When I came in pure, I came in a blank page. <laughs> I'm guessing that means like I lost my innocence through your toxicity. I lost my innocence, my purity through through your volatility, through all this, the, the, the horrible things you were saying to me. I love the metaphor in there, the imagery. Hey, I came in good intentions, right? Like I came in good intentions. I was having a good day. I didn't even know why you were so angry. I didn't even know what regret was. I was an innocent person and then I lost my innocence because you started... Treat me like shit, basically. Wow. Then you got sick too, and guess who took care of you? Later then, didn't you? Didn't you? Now when you look at me, you're condemned to see the monster you're not. So she's saying, remember that time I was sick and you didn't take care of me? And then when you got sick, I took care of you and I made you see how evil of a person you were? She's bringing out the mother issues in this. She, she's reading. She is reading this guy. I honestly am like, wow, do not mess with Fiona because she's going into the psychology of what has made this person filth. like you did all your damage just leave me alone just that was the conclusion that's that's the that's the ending it's like i can't this is all the damage you did to me you turned me i came into this in in a good state wanting to bring good and you brought out the worst in me you made me lose my dovetail my white dove feathers um I took care of you, but you didn't take care of me. This is a very unhealthy dynamic that's being captured. And not only is it an unhealthy dynamic, it's a dynamic that sh that changed her as a person. And, you know, she learned about these, these things. Like, she learned why people are angry because she became angry herself. She became angry as a result of this experience. And now she understands it. And in a way, she kind of understands this person more from being hurt by them. 
And she's realizing this is why the way this is why you are the way you are. Because somebody treated you the way that you're treating me. And now through my pain that you gave me, I understand you. But in a way, she also said, but I showed you how bad of a person you are and how you are a result of your upbringing when you didn't take care of me when I was sick, but I took care of you. These were my first experiences that brought out this side to me. I mean, I love that one of the songs when she talked about being calloused because I think we're really getting an idea of where the callousness comes from. And it's through these experiences. This is what led to the isolation. This is why she says, alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. That's a continuing theme. Because earlier in the album, she was talking about like, how can I expect love when I'm begging to be left alone? We're going back to that, right? We're going back to that. And this is the result. She's seeking isolation. She's giving up. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to invite people anymore. She doesn't want to be vulnerable anymore. She, she was open to it before she was an open book, but now she's closing up. She's closing up. My cheeks were reflecting the longest wavelength. Okay, you just, why didn't you guys tell me? There's not one bad song in this fucking album. Like, I already like this song. I already like the song. I just started it. I just started it. Oh, man. Okay. We're really going to finish the whole album and not have one bad song. That's what we're doing today? Okay. Hey. This tone on her voice. And I kept touching my neck to guide you right where I wanted you to kiss me when we find some time alone. It's so good. <laughs> And the rivulets had you riveted. This is so good. I love this. What the fuck?
to go to a cafe in the city, like in New York or something, and just listen to this type of music. Because I've just, I feel refreshed. I feel refreshed. It's like something happens to your brain when there's just so much beauty going on at once. You know, and just layers and layers of, of thought and, and, and selectivity and, and verbiage and just like, it's just so good, you know? Just immaculate. This is a highlight, obviously. I mean, I don't always say highlight, but you can tell when it's a highlight. I mean, look, you could just read this and it's a poem. I mean, my cheeks were reflecting the longest wavelength. My fan was folded up and grazing my forehead. And I kept touching my neck to guide your eye to where I wanted you to kiss me when we find some time alone. My scars were reflecting the mist in your headlights. I looked like a neon zebra shaking rain off her cheeks. Wow, I'm gonna guess that she's talking about zebras and how they attract mates, because I think Fiona Apple is so smart like that, that she's making a reference to how zebras attract their mate. I'm gonna double check and see. Okay, so not exactly, um, but she says, but it says here that zebras, their stripes are meant to conceal them from prey. Being, being neon means it's no longer concealed anymore. Oh, wow. So she wants to be seen. She wants to be seen. Wow. So she's she's saying like I'm I'm a z I'm a zebra with neon stripes. So zebras have their stripes to conceal themselves in nature. So I was right. She is making a reference to nature. I was wrong, but I was also right. <laughs> she's making a reference to nature, being like I'm a zebra like with stripes, but instead of them being black and white, I'm neon because I want you to see me. I want you to hunt me. Like I want you to catch me because I want to be seen by you. Started out, started out sipping the water and now we try to swallow the wave. I think that means like they started off slow, you know, just small sips and now they're all the way in. That's, that's how I read it. Yeah, this is very light. This is very, just beautiful love song, crush. I'm getting crush vibe, very beginning stages. She's trying to get this person's attention. You know, it's, it's just the way it's captured too with the instrumentation. Top tier. I just love it. I love her vocal delivery. I love I love the sound of it. It's so spunky. So now we're going to go to Hot Knife. If I'm butter, if I'm butter, if I'm butter, then he's a hot man. It's hey. my heart, I'll send him a scum, sweet show, we never dance in burn paradise. If I'm butter, if I'm butter, if I'm butter, then he's a hot man. He makes my heart, I'll send him a scum, sweet show, we never dance in bird of paradise. He excites me, must be like the Genesis of rhythm. I'm not commenting on her vocals enough, but like, just so you know. That's part of the conversation. Like this, this is a Grammy winning album. Like I hope this also won a Grammy because this is absolutely ridiculous. Just the quality of it. How do I get into these songs so fast? I'm already grooving. Hey, 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 hey. 
I'm a hot knife, I'm a hot knife I'm a hot knife, piece of powder butter If I get a chance, I'm gonna show him that He's never gonna need another, never need another I'm a hot knife, I'm a hot knife I'm a hot knife, piece of powder butter If I get a chance, I'm gonna show him that He's never gonna need another, never need another and you're a hot knife I'm just you have the ability to just melt me to just glide right through me you know it's, it's very similar to the last song where it's like you I it's just a lust song it's just lust um you know I'm into you you have this pull on me you have this ability to uh I melt around you you know you're a hot knife to my butter you can cut right through me you can get right through me okay next we have Largo last but not least this flew by I, I don't know where this is gonna fit I definitely think it's very fetch the boat cutters is still my favorite but this is just as good I think I like fetch the boat cutters a little bit more I would probably give this like a 9.5 there's something about fetch the boat cutters that just goes a bit more high but is every album good is this what I'm missing out on is this is this a, is this a serious thing is this really what I'm gonna is this really what I'm in for every album is just top tier is this a conversation that we're having? And nobody talks about this? Nobody mentions it? She's not on everybody's top five list? Like, what? Like, I, I, I'm i like, where's the bad songs? Where's the okay songs? They all slap. Hopefully I didn't speak too soon because I got one song left. I better like this song. I better like this song. <laughs> Capturing a little bit of intoxication in her vocal delivery. Family, and that'll be enough to keep me from dying when I want to die. When over the rain goes too far, go to Largo, Largo, to Largo. When over the rain goes too far, go to Largo, go to Largo. I'm hopping scotches with the red eye and Bob of a barely containing. family and that'll be enough to keep me from dying when I want to die. I love like the little uh, yodeling, the yodeling. She's like, when that's too far, just go to Largo. I think this is an ode to Largo, obviously. I don't know where Largo is. Is it in Ireland? 
Where's Largo? Oh, okay. It's in the it's in California. Okay, so she's talking about like a space where she plays music. I love that because I'm someone that used to spend a lot of times in like a third space that was very centered on music and it just felt like such an escape. And I love that she kind of captures this in the song. It's like, this is my space. This is where my family is. I love that if that's what it's about. I feel like singing and drinking and stuff and I don't want to care if I stumble or cry. Handle me like family and that'll be enough to keep me from dying when I want to go and die. This is her third this is her um third space. You know? This is her third space. Is it third space? Third place. Third place. This is her third place. This is her safe space. This is her this is where she just feels free. She gets drunk. There's a bunch of characters there. Anybody that's ever had a third place can really feel this song and I definitely do and I really did like it. It's definitely different but I think she's kind of trying to capture the eclectic vibe at this place called Largo. That was cute. That was that it's not my high like top favorite but I did also really like that one. I love the yodeling. I love the the, the message behind it because I just relate to that so bad. I miss my third place so bad. Cabro's Art Bar, Delaware Beach, Florida. If you know, you know. Um, Not like anybody that knows me watches my videos but Anyway, I loved it. I loved it. It could have ended on the second to last song. I think we could have flipped the order because I just love that second to last song so much. Um, but this was really cute too. Um, gosh, what do I have to say? I love Fiona Apple. That's it. Hey guys, I had to come here and make a voice memo because this album is going to have to get a 10. And it's a very uncomfortable situation for me because are we really going 10 for 10? Like I just... Fetch the Bolt Cutters was a 10. And now the Idler Will has to be a 10. A 9.5 would be absolutely insulting. When I tell you this album has become my personality, when I tell you that literally lyrics just pop into my head on a moment's notice, and I don't even know all the lyrics yet, like imagine when I memorize all the lyrics, like this is going to be my personality. This has to be my personality because... um. The lyric about the guy being the genesis to rhythm and then the part in Hot Knife where she starts off by saying that he's the hot knife. But then at the end of the song, she flips it and she becomes the hot knife. And I didn't even realize that on first listen. And just there's so many lyrics. I can't even tell you that I didn't even point out in this reaction. It's out of control. When you walk down the street and you have this album in your ear and you're and you hear the complexity in the piano plus the percussiveness in this album on top of her lyrics and the fucking growl in her voice. So I don't know. I'm going to but the thing is this is new to me. This is new to me. So fetch the bolt cutters I know Fetch the Bulk is just as good as this album. So we're not ranking these. We're going head to head here. There's no need to rank these. these. This is just, they're both phenomenal pieces of work. These, this is incredible. I'm going to have to stand. Like, and you know what's annoying about this? I always end up falling in love with artists that never tour. This is my life. This is my life that I'm living. So now I'm going to go cry because I'm probably never going to see this woman live. And I hope you enjoyed this reaction video. That's all I'm going to say because I, I'm speechless. Like, this woman is phenomenal.